Hello folks, Prasad Domla here. In this video, I'll show you the process of deploying CDK projects to multiple environments within a single AWS account or uh, separate AWS accounts. It's a common scenario to have multiple environments in any infrastructure project like dev, test, and production. The goal here is to deploy our infrastructure to these environments using single code base, but still allowing customization per environment. Say for example, if you're creating an S3 bucket, you might not want encryption enabled in dev, but in production, you may need to uh, enable encryption. We should be able to manage such environment specific customizations from a central location within our project. Also in this demo, I'll be using Git branches to determine the environment. So if I run deploy command from my uh, develop branch, the infrastructure will be uh, deployed to my dev AWS account and will be uh, deployed to prod AWS accounts if I deploy from a master branch or a main branch. We'll be using CDK version two and TypeScript for the demo. For the sake of the demo, we shall create a couple of uh, S3 buckets with encryption enabled in production and disabled in dev. We should also create a DynamoDB table with a say point in time recovery enabled in prod and disabled in dev. All the code I'm using in this demo will be in my uh, Git repo. I'll leave the link in the description for your reference. Coming to the prerequisites, you need to have CDK CLI installed on your local machine. You can follow official AWS documentation to install CDK for your operating system. I'm using Mac and I have the latest uh, version of CDK CLI, which is uh, 2.20 uh, as of recording this uh, video. I use global NPM install to install my CDK CLI. Make sure you're using uh, version two of uh, CDK libraries as there are some significant changes between versions one and two. Another prerequisite is to bootstrap the AWS account you'll be using to deploy resources using CDK. This basically creates a stack with resources that are used by uh, CDK when deploying resources to that specific uh, AWS account and region. These resources include an S3 bucket for storing files and IAM roles for granting permissions needed for deployments. And this process is called as uh, bootstrapping and this needs to be done only once per AWS account and region combination. We can use CDK bootstrap command with AWS account number and region. I have two separate AWS accounts for dev and prod. Let me first set my profile to uh, dev and run the bootstrap command. If you notice the output here, you can see a message saying that it will use administrator access policy to deploy our resources by default. This might not be suitable for everyone. If you want to restrict your team to be able to deploy only certain resources, you can create a policy accordingly and pass it while bootstrapping your AWS account using CloudFormation execution policies option. I'll do the bootstrapping for my prod account as well. Let's quickly log into my dev AWS console and look at the resources it created as part of bootstrapping. The CloudFormation stack is called CDK Toolkit by default. You can customize this if required. If you go to resources, you can see it created a bunch of uh, IAM roles and policies, an S3 bucket, and a system parameter to hold the CDK version. As I mentioned earlier, this is one time step that needs to be performed once per AWS account and region combination. Now that our AWS accounts are bootstrapped, let's initialize our uh, CDK project. So navigate to the folder where you want to create your uh, CDK project and execute the CDK init command with the language as uh, TypeScript. Make sure you have an empty folder before initializing uh, CDK. I created an empty Git repo with the uh, main and develop branches and I'm currently on the develop branch. This command will create CDK project structure on your local machine and installs all its uh, dependencies. Let me open the project in VS code and I'll quickly go through the folder structure created by the init command. First, we have the bin directory, which is the entry point for our uh, CDK project. If you take a look at the package.json file, you can see that the binary is pointing to the TypeScript file within this uh, bin directory. Next, we have lib directory where we define our stacks and CDK init command creates a boilerplate code to define the stack. We'll be adding our infrastructure resources to this file. Also note that we can have multiple stacks within the single CDK project. It's up to you how you want to define your stacks. You can group your resources based on AWS service or application functionality or any other grouping mechanism that you seem appropriate for your environment. Each stack you create here will be deployed as CloudFormation stack in your AWS account. For the sake of this demo, I'll create a single stack with two resources, S3 bucket and a DynamoDB table. If you're using a single stack for all your resources, keep an eye on the resource limits of CloudFormation. Currently, you can only have uh, 500 resources in a single stack. Next directory is node modules. And as you might already know, all our NPM packages will be installed in this folder. Next, there is a test directory where you can write unit tests for your CDK stacks using Jest. CDK unit tests are out of scope for this video. I might create another video explaining how to um, unit test your CDK projects. 
Next, we have git ignore and npm ignore files, which doesn't need any explanation. You should already know about these files if you are working on any git or uh, node projects. Then we have cdk.json, which is an important config file. I'll come to this file in a moment as we'll be adding all our environment specific config in this file. Then we have just config package.json and tsconfig.json files. If you quickly have a look at package.json file, you can see all the dependencies and uh, dev dependencies. The main dependency here is uh, AWS CDK lib, which provides all our CDK constructs. So that's our uh, default project structure. Now let's have a look at our uh, cdk.json file. The first key called app points to the command telling CDK CLI how to execute our CDK code, which basically executes the TypeScript file in the bin directory. Also, if you have noticed, CDK uses TS node to compile our TypeScript files to uh, JavaScript before executing them. Next, we have watch key, which specifies which files to include or exclude when using CDK watch command. So CDK watch basically watches the files you specified in the CDK.json and performs a deployment when those files are changed without us doing a CDK deploy. But in this demo, we shall be using CDK deploy command to deploy our uh, resources. Next, we have context key, which defines and keeps track of all the feature flags. These feature flags enable CDK team to push new features that introduce uh, breaking changes outside of uh, major uh, version releases. By default, CDK init command will add the feature flags and uh, corresponding Boolean values for those flags. For now, you can leave those as uh, defaults can have a look at the CDK documentation if you want to know more about what each flag um, does. I'll leave the link in the description. I'll be using this context key to specify the config for our uh, environments. First, let me add some global parameters to the context. These parameters are irrespective of the environments. For example, app name and region. I'll use this app name to name our uh, AWS resources and I'll set my region to Sydney as I'm based in Australia. Next, I'll add environments key which will be an array of objects, one per environment. So I have set my environment and branch names for development and production. I'll also add AWS account numbers to my environments. I'll be passing these account numbers as part of uh, stack props. I'll show that later in this video. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, we'll be encrypting our S3 bucket in prod and we'll leave our uh, develop bucket uh, unencrypted. We can control that using our environments array. I'll add a new key called S3 encrypt and set it to false for develop and true for uh, production. Similarly, I'll add another key for enabling point in time recovery for our production table and disabling the same for our uh, developed DynamoDB table. These are just two examples. You can add as many parameters or environments as required for your uh, CDK context. Before we proceed further, let's create a type definition for our CDK context. I'll create a types file and add a type called CDK context and add all the attributes on their data types. This will be helpful when we uh, use the context object in our stacks. Now let's move to our uh, stack file in the lib directory and create our S3 bucket and DynamoDB table. You need to keep CDK documentation handy while defining your stacks. So the documentation will provide you with all the parameters or methods you can use within your uh, CDK project. Make sure you're using the correct version of the documentation as there might be slight differences uh, between versions. In my case, I'm using uh, 2.20 version of the documentation, which is uh, same as my uh, CDK CLI version. As you can see, you have a full list of all AWS resources here. Let's find S3 for our uh, use case. Each service section will have an overview where you can find some common use cases and examples. You can go to specific uh, construct page, uh, which in our case is uh, bucket, and find all the props and methods for that uh, particular construct. As you can see, we have a lot of props for a bucket and not all of them are uh, mandatory. CDK adds some sensible defaults for these props. You can find all the default values as well in the documentation. Let's get back to our code and define a bucket. Within our uh, lib directory, open the boilerplate uh, stack file. We first need to import the CDK constructs from CDK lib package. In our case, let's import S3 and DynamoDB. I'll remove the default SQS import as we won't be using SQS in this demo. Next, I'll import our CDK context uh, type as we'll be using um, the parameters from the CDK context. Next, we need to add a parameter to our constructor to hold the CDK context. We shall be passing this uh, context from our uh, entry point in the bin directory. As of now, TypeScript will show an error as we are not uh, at passing any context uh, where we initialize this stack. We'll do that in a moment. Now within our constructor, we shall uh, define our resources. Let me delete the default boilerplate code and add our bucket definition. I'll just paste the code here so that you don't need to uh, see me typing the code. This is our bucket definition. I'm calling my bucket as demo bucket and I'm giving it a name which is in the format app name hyphen environment. 
and these values are picked uh, from our uh, CDK context. Also, you can see that I'm setting the encryption to either S3 managed or unencrypted based on the S3 encrypt value from the context. Now, let me paste the code for our DynamoDB table. Here, I'm calling my uh, table as demo table and the name is set as uh, app name hyphen environment and I'm setting the billing mode to uh, paper request. Again, you can uh, configure it different for different environments by adding respective attributes to your uh, environment specific uh, context. For this demo, I'm using paper request for both development and production. Next, I'm setting the names and types for partition key and sort key. And finally, I'm setting the point in time recovery value based on the parameter in the CDK context. It's optional, but if you want to add any stack outputs, for example, ARNs uh, for our bucket and DynamoDB table, you can do it by defining CFN output resource. Let me first import CFN output from CDK lib and add two uh, CloudFormation outputs. You can see that I'm using the bucket ARN and table ARN values from the resources we defined above and giving those um, respective export names. That's it for now in this stack file. Now let's go to our bin directory and use this stack and pass in the environment specific context. As you can see in the default boilerplate code, our stack is already uh, imported from our lib directory. Now before initializing our stack, we need to uh, extract environment specific context from our uh, cdk.json file. And as I said earlier, we'll be determining our uh, environment based on the current branch we are in. I'm using git branch npm package to determine the current uh, branch. This is not the only way to determine the current branch. There are different uh, methods. You can use uh, whatever is uh, suitable for you. Let me first install uh, git branch npm package and respective types. And then I'm importing uh, git branch and CDK context type. Next, I'm adding a simple uh, utility function to get the context. Let me paste in the code here. So this function takes CDK app as parameter and returns uh, a CDK context. First, I'm fetching the current branch using git branch npm package, which we just installed. Then using the try get context method provided by CDK app, we're fetching global parameters and uh, environment based on the branch name. Later, we are just merging and returning globals and environment uh, as a CDK context. Now I'm just removing the boilerplate code here and adding a new function called create stacks. I'm first creating an instance of CDK app and calling our get context function, which we just created, passing in the app as a function parameter. This returns a CDK context for whatever branch we are uh, currently in. Next, we're defining a tags object with just one key called environment. When we pass this tags object as part of our uh, stack props, these tags will be added to all the resources created uh, in that stack. This is a very efficient and easy way of uh, adding consistent tags to your uh, AWS resources. And as you can see, you can define uh, the tag values in cdk.json and these can be environment specific as well. Next, we are defining the stack props object where we configure our uh, AWS environment, which is basically uh, account number and region. And we're also defining our uh, CloudFormation stack name, description and tags. Now we can initialize our stack, which is called as a multi NV CDK demo stack and pass in our um, CDK app, which is called as scope and ID, which I'm defining as app name hyphen stack hyphen environment. And finally passing in the stack props and context, which is again environment specific. And finally, in the end, let's call this uh, create stacks function. And that's it. We have now uh, defined or uh, written all the code that is required to deploy our infrastructure we can now run our uh, CDK deploy command. Make sure you have set your uh, AWS profile correctly. I have set my AWS profile to my uh, dev account. Now I can execute CDK list command to see all of the stacks in my CDK project. As we have only one stack, you can see that uh, stack name, which we are uh, defined in the format of app name hyphen stack hyphen environment. You can also see the environment and globals from our uh, CDK.json uh, context. Before deploying, you can execute CDK synth to synthesize the stack. If you have a single stack, it will output the CloudFormation template within the terminal. You can see our S3 bucket and DynamoDB table in the CloudFormation template in YAML format. You can also see some uh, CDK specific metadata within the template. You can also view the template from cdk.out directory in JSON format by default. Now let's execute CDK deploy to deploy our uh, resources. It might take some time to deploy the stack as we have only two resources. It should be uh, relatively quick. You can see the progress on the terminal as well. The deployment is now finished and you can see the outputs we defined, the ARNs of the bucket and the DynamoDB table. You can also see the synthesis and deployment times as part of the output. Let's quickly jump onto the console and have a quick look at the stack. As you can see, we have our stack created and under resources, uh, we can see our demo bucket and demo table. 
Also, let's check the encryption and recovery settings on the bucket and DynamoDB table. As expected, we have our uh, default encryption disabled and uh, point in time recovery disabled on the DynamoDB table. Now let's promote these changes to production. We can simply merge these changes to our uh, main branch and run CDK deploy from that branch. Let me first commit and push my uh, develop branch. Now let me check out to uh, main branch and merge uh, develop into main. I'm switching my AWS profile to production and execute uh, CDK deploy. Also uh, by mistake, if you're using a wrong profile, CDK will throw an error. For example, if I execute deploy without switching my profile, I should get an error. This is because we are passing the account number as part of uh, stack props. CDK will try to assume the role in that account, which will obviously uh, fail if your uh, profile is not set correctly. Let me switch my profile to prod now and execute the deployment command. And the deployment process started now as I'm using the correct AWS profile. Also, you can see that CDK picked up the correct environment based on our uh, branch, which is main in this case. Let me go to my prod AWS account and have a look at the stacks. As you can see, we have a production stack created and under resources, we can see our bucket and DynamoDB table. If you click on the bucket and go to properties, we can see that default encryption is enabled and set to S3 managed as we defined in our config for production. Similarly, if we go to our DynamoDB table and check the point in time recovery setting, it should be enabled as expected. So that's how you can use a single CDK code base and deploy your uh, infrastructure to different environments uh, while still controlling the settings for each environment. You can use the same process in your CI CD pipelines as well. You can keep pushing your changes to develop branch, which deploys your changes to your uh, dev environment. And when you are ready, you can merge your changes to prod or uh, main branch to deploy it to production. And obviously you're not limited to just dev and prod. You can have additional uh, environments like test, QA, UAT, and so on as per your requirements. So that's it for this uh, tutorial. Hope you found it uh, helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel for more videos on AWS Cloud. If you have any questions or suggestions for any um, AWS related tutorials, please feel free to uh, comment or uh, email me. Thanks a lot for watching. Always keep learning new stuff and see you in the next one.